Hey everybody, it's me, your good buddy Thorne. We're going to get started on part two of the heavy infantry. Are you ready? Here we go. All right. Now, if you remember last episode, we did talk about the armored legs, and we touched upon some of the body defenses, uh, particularly the gambeson, the folds, and the tacits. The folds and the tacits are kind of that in between legs and body defenses. So I had to, I had to talk to, I had to talk to you about them when we talked about legs because it's all part of the same overall defense. <clears throat> But we're really going to focus today on the upper body of the chest. Uh, we'll do the arms in a separate scenario, then tie it all together once we do the head. Okay? Now, let me preface all this by saying that I am in no way an expert on medieval armor. Uh, most of everything I've learned, well, I did, I did go to school for some of this, but reading and research. I am not an expert on medieval armor, and this is really not a video series on medieval armor. This is more or less a video series on creating a heavy infantry impression for live action role play. So, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna send me comments and say, "Well, that's not historically accurate," yeah, I know it's not supposed to be. This is we're playing a game, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna continue on we're talking about the gambeson or the Akitan. Now those two words are kind of interchangeable most of the time. Uh, gambeson has its base root in Germanic and uh, Latin uh, languages and Akitan has its base words or base roots in Arabic. You know what they mean? Some kind of padded garment. Okay. These were first seen around, oh, uh, fairly early on in time period and they traveled all the way through uh, the Dark Ages, Medieval, um, or the Medieval Ages, into the Renaissance, and actually they were still being used during the English Civil War of the 1640s, 1650s, as a base layer underneath the plate. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about, okay? <clears throat> when you're doing gambeson or padded armor, uh, it, you've, got a lot of, you've got a lot of different ways to go especially when you're doing um, fantasy LARP, okay? We looked at my padded shirt, or my padded jacket for my Norse. So let's bring that out and talk about it a little bit more. This is pretty early time period, very early time period, when we're talking fantasy. It is just a, a quilted piece. Worn underneath the armor, provides a little bit of protection from the armor, and also protects the clothes from the armor, okay? Uh, it is based on a T-tunic design, very straightforward, lightly quilted, so it's not too hot. It is about as historically accurate as elves are in the medieval ages, okay? It's <coughs> based on Viking or Scandinavian coats of that time period, but that's about it, okay? Very lightly, quilted, like I told you about, and it serves its purpose very well. Um, works for chain mail, works for plate, and, and maybe I'll show you that at a later time period, we're in this underneath plate. Um, it's very effective, very cost effective, because I made this myself. So, another couple pieces we have here that we could take a look at in the LARP aspect of quilted or padded armor is this piece. Now, I believe, yeah, this is Mathala. This is their, <coughs> I think this is part of their Adam set. Um, it has longer skirt pieces. It does have sleeves. It is very heavily quilted and uh, made with a tough, very strong canvas. This would probably keep you very warm in the winter and very hot during the summer. It is attached with these straps. Now, I took the arms and the lower leg defenses off. I was planning on wearing this underneath um, the full halberd. But it is so heavy 
it needs to be pretty cold for me to wear this. It's a nice padded jacket, and I stress the word padded. Uh, it is well made, and fully, oh, fully lined, but unless, you're, <laughs> unless you really want to get hot during the summer, uh, I'd probably say no to this, okay? It would work for a standalone jacket, it would work for padded armor, but for what we're doing, or what we're trying to do for the heavy infantry, probably not your best bet. Now let's look at a couple of other pieces, okay? This, uh, this is the Lord of Battle. Historic Gambeson. This is also could be called an arming jack because it does have arming points to lace the armor to it. This is very historically based and also is a very heavily padded. Okay. You do see the arming points down at the bottom, or the lacing holes down at the bottom for armor and hose. You see the lacing points for your legs and your lacing points for the upper arms. It is well put together. It does have a raw seam on the inside, which shouldn't hurt it that much at all. And is full bodied. This is highly tailored. This is more 14th, 14th century arming doublet or an arming gambeson uh, than the, what we've looked at earlier. Very nice, but <clears throat> once again, very heavy. I do like this. I just need to lose a little weight. Now the last piece that I want to take a look at <clears throat> before we start talking about more of the armor is the gambeson that we looked at the other day from Epic Armory. That is their Imperial a gambeson. All right. Now, at first look, this looks very much like the gambeson that we just took a look at from Lords of Battle. It is historically based with the quilting, but its pattern is more simplistic. It makes a very nice jacket though. It is lightly padded with cotton and quilted. It's lined with a nice cotton and does have detachable arms. Now, as we talked about prior, a gap in your armor anywhere is a gap for a knife blade to go through, hence the sewn voider. Okay. If you were in combat and didn't have a voider there, enemy got you down or could stab through the armpit very easy. Directly into the heart, directly into the lungs, you're a dead man. Okay? So that's kind of why they didn't do this kind of crap on real armor systems. Now, for LARP, it's really there for breathing, it's really there to be functional. You can take the sleeves off. All right. Now what I've done is sewn I've sewn the voider to it with wax thread to hold it on. And that provides that protection from a knife thrust under the arm. Okay? Now, let me put this on and we'll take a look at it, okay? All right, now that I have the gambeson on, you can see it's fairly form-fitting. It's long enough when I stretch out, my arms aren't going to be, uh, my wrists aren't going to be due. This could be properly called an arming jack because there are arming points or arming holes throughout the garment so you can strap armor on. But we're going to call it a gambeson because, well, it's just easier to say. Now, what I was talking about the last episode and, and touched upon earlier were the voiders. Now, they covered a void in the plate defenses, like the underarm. So you can see if I hold this arm out, You've got a nice stab point right there. But with the voider, that would block some of that, okay? Now, the, uh, the same thing with the chainmail skirt that we had on. The skirt protected that spot that was not covered by the regular armor or the plate armor. Okay? With the skirt, the voiders 
to the arm and a neck void or chain mail place and also which I don't have in here yet a strip of mail across the elbow or the inside of the elbow will protect those joints from attack now I talked about the throat protection for a minute now let me show you what that looks like simple chain mail drape with heavy leather reinforcement now when this goes on once again this is much easier with the squire once this goes on any blows that are coming off of the armor to the chest and into this, it will stop a point. It might hurt your throat, but that's what the padding behind this is for too. Okay? Now, this is kind of what the secondary defenses are in, in the gambeson. You could go into battle wearing this alone if you're a poor infantryman, but it's not going to provide you nearly as much protection as plate or mail defense. Now, plate was very, very expensive. That's why, <laughs> that's why the knights, the nobility had plate and the common soldier had a lot less. Um, but we're talking about heavy infantry, we are talking about that plate defense. So we've got voiders here, we've got neck protection, and the chainmail skirt, which I'm not going to put on. So hold your horses, ladies. That being said, Let's move on to the next piece of equipment. All right, okay, so now we have our Epic Armory breastplate. This is the Dark Warrior breastplate. Um, they make several different types. This is kind of ahistorical uh, for earlier time periods. This is kind of a late war raised ridge, or late medieval ridge, but I kind of like it. It looks cool. I did paint a, a, a heraldry piece on it, but it's pretty nice. It closes with two straps on the side, two on the top, and the back, they make a generic back, and it's just, it's just nice. You know? um, it's not that heavy, but provides quite a bit of protection. So, in addition to this, with the folds and tassets, we would write a basic body defense. Now let me put the falls and tassets on and I'll show you where we go. Alright, now we're back with falls and tassets. Um, I wanted to show you these again, because we touched on them very quickly with the arms. But I wanted to show you these again. Right? Because the breastplate is one signal pe single piece, at least in this one, um, you can't bend at the waist if it went down as far as this. But with the folds, or the folds, it folds up due to articulation. And you can bend over, and you can kneel down wearing this, and you can ride on horseback. So, there was a lot of medieval armor that had this attached to the breastplate. Not mine, but others. There's also different styles. There's gothic, well, you know, we could spend, <laughs> we could spend several hours talking about different types of breastplates. But we're really just going to talk about mine for because, well, this is what I have, okay? So, with the folds and tassets is the lower part of the defense, and then the breastplate is the upper. Let's take a look at what all that looks together, okay? All right, so now I got my breastplate on. I got my, my chain neck defenses. My facets, or my, my folds and tassets, <laughs> folds and tassets, and my gambeson, okay? Now, I didn't, tach, I didn't tighten this up all the way because I am by myself today. <laughs> it would be relatively difficult to get all this stuff on. But with this, now I'm going to talking some pretty heavy armor. Now, does it limit your movement? Not that much because the articulation points are built into the folds, and once we get our arms on, you'll see how that works too. So, that's basically 
the body protection that we're going to talk about for this particular piece. Um, I want to do talk about a couple other uh, plate defenses that we can touch upon. So, breastplate and falls, pretty heavy armor. Okay, let's take a look at a couple other pieces, okay? Thank you. 